Welcome to Talking Jazz. My guest today is Jasna Jovicevic, and she's talking with us from Serbia, from her home. And Jasna is an incredible sax player, multi-instrumentalist and composer and advocate for so many things. I got to know her a couple of years ago. We got to spend a little time in Austria and curator of American jazz, John Hassey, actually introduced us to each other. And I just found a common spirit there in terms of thinking and in terms of the music and conceptualization. Welcome, Jasna. Thank you, Monica, for having me. It's so great to have you. We got to tour together in May, and that's when you were telling us about this new project that you were on, and you had this wonderful video that was coming out. We're going to talk about that music and, and get a good taste of it. This first one that we'll listen to is Fear of the Unknown, meaning, yes, fear. I think you're more of the fear type in terms of the unknown and jumping in. I mean, tell us a little bit just the different countries that you lived in so far. You spent time it's in several places in the world, right? I should say I had luck, but you know, coming from Serbia, I had this turbulent childhood in 90s because of all the wars. So many of us changed place of living. So I moved to Budapest in Hungary, where I lived there for 12 years. I studied there. I studied music at the Franz Liszt Academy jazz saxophone and then and then you know once you start to be a nomad then you become a nomad it was very natural for me to change places i was in new york for a few months a few times i lived in toronto for four years did where i did my masters and i played there traveled to brazil and uh, india and different places now almost 10 years back to serbia that's a little cycle i just ended up but it's not the end i hope i'm i'm sure it's not the end and that's quite a radius you know to go new york Canada and then Brazil and that's pretty much yeah. traveling and spending four years in Canada I'm sure you know that changed a lot of your perception and the way you think about music making right yeah I always say that you know even I did my degree in music in, in Hungary I always say that I actually started to play in, in Toronto that's where I got the whole idea of jazz, actually. I have to say that. Although I studied somewhere else, I really started to play different kinds of jazz music, different genres with different people. So many ways I learned how jazz could be played and understood. And it was from Toronto. A lot of nice friends and colleagues I met there who really welcomed me and helped me and took me to play with them. So it was super good experience. And then in New York as well, of course, I was there twice for three months as an artist in residency. So that also gave me a big injection of jazz for to go. After when you listen to my music, it's not really an American way of jazz, but actually it gave me insights into what jazz can be. Well, you know, it's all to be discussed. What's the American way of jazz? You know, what's the principles of jazz? I always think it's more, jazz is more how you approach playing than what it actually, it's supposed to sound like meaning you're going for a process rather for a product when you enter the process of playing. Well, yeah, you know that my music is, and you will introduce the, the, this new album, it's it's all about process. And even the music we will listen to, it's not, you can say it's an American genre of jazz, if there is such. What I wanted to say is that jazz, what I experienced in, in North America, that jazz comes much more naturally to musicians. That's why they have so many different ways of approaching it while in Europe if I can say it's a little bit an elite music genre you know what I mean so you have a certain approach of course many different approaches in Europe too I felt this very common thing very close to people to every day jazz is lived there like on everyday level it's not something you put up you know as an elite kind of thing okay now the high artistic pressions like jazz that's how we see jazz in Europe most of the time and what I loved about the North America is that actually is the part of every day. That's what made it so diverse and interesting in different ways than in Europe, if I can compare. Obviously, John Hassey always points that out, that jazz is the one art form that's uniquely American. So it's part of the life here and, and everywhere else. It's just like Serbian folklore for you would be part of everyday life. But for us, we would go, oh, let's study this. Every country has their unique ingrained art form. 
terms and and you're right obviously jazz is ingrained in the life here appreciated and played all over the world in in various forms actually the fear of the unknown this is one of your more improvised ones on the album right the first song is fully improvised it was a concept about the first song it's a fully improvised there are some samples in the background coming from my project before called I'm, uh, I Sit and Worry About Her, where we sonified the brain waves. So these samples you will hear in this song are from sonified brain waves, where we sonified beta brain waves, which are those when you are nervous and alert. So that's what is in this song. And this was the only thing that we knew that it will happen. Everything else was just an accident. That's a good way to dive into this first one, just to think about brain wave samples and just be open for the experience. So uh, on this one, we hear you and the samples violin cello and two bass players all right we'll talk about the personnel after that and this came out on on which label it's the state 51 conspiracy records from uh, great britain title of the album the sounding solitude so let's hear the fear of the unknown the first track of the sound of the unknown here we go <laughs> the fear 
Fear of the Unknown, performed by my guest today, Jasna Jovicevic, who you heard on saxophone. This was a sample from her new release, Sounding Solitude. We hinted that we were going to talk about the concept of this album, because this is not just a collection of songs put together. There is much more deeper meaning to this, as you can already hear from this first track. Explain that to us a little bit. My concepts of the albums are most of the time complicated because they are artistic researches in their own nature. So it's the big process of research before I record anything. It's like an year of research and rehearsing and composing. And this one I did during the lockdown. So that's why it's called Sounding Solitude. It's related to my personal experience of pandemic state of emergency, the whole isolation and sudden changes we went through on a global level make me explore the state of the unknown as the first song says it was all without the interaction with musicians because we are in a lockdown so that's why it's called sounding solitude what's going on with us inside when we challenged without the social interaction music interaction and musicians as we know we live of that it's all we have it's how we create and it's how we communicate through the interaction this whole concept was exploring my own loneliness what music can come out and what kind of interactions we find if it's not social, if it's not musical, there is still interaction. So we interact inside with something, with someone. And with all these emotions and, and mental states we went through. So for this album, I use the Cobbler Rose grief model, which outlines five stages of coping with grief. And I did adjust it to 10, uh, six compositions, actually 10 altogether tracks, but six compositions. These five stages that she offer is the denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And I added the one at the end, inner insight. So I compose for each of these states composition, very different. So as you heard, the first one was the fear of unknown. And it's this first shock that we had when we got the facts of COVID provoking, we felt panic and fear and shock and denial. Hall of Green provided peace was conceptually about that. Well, going through what we all felt during that year, and you were able to put that in music, which is a good way you know we always say the first responders are the ones who rescue us and the second responders is the arts and music to help us get over these stages so this next one then is the deep uh, blue healer are we entering the second stage with that i didn't give you the sample of the second stage it was the walking meditation and it's it can be found in internet the, the music video you you mentioned that's the walking meditation and that was the second state but the third state was the, the deep blue healer it answers the state of burgundy, classification and confusion, consideration. When we started to reach to each other, when we realized, okay, this is really happening. We have to calm down. I have to see what's going on. I have to find the balance. When we realized that this is not happening only to us, but it's happening to everybody. This moment of reaching to others with empathy was one of the deepest things for me that happened during this pandemic. And that's the moment of different interaction that we used to. Here we are again about the interaction and actually during this album to be really interactive I use some of the tools from yoga and Buddhist practices which are here as tools to help us to overcome these stages. In this one, I used not really, but in the melody is hidden the mantra of a Buddhist practice for the healing. This is maybe the most jazzy piece, if I can say this, from the whole album. I would say let's listen to that one. And, and after that, I want to talk a little bit about your instrumentation and the recording process, because, the, you know, that's really interesting, too, yeah. and how you picked that. But let's have a listen. So this is the deep blue healing. You'll hear the Buddhist mantra on in the melody. And this is composed and performed by my guest today, Jasna Jovicevic, and from her latest album, Sounding Solitude, on the State 51 conspiracy label. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
track from Sounding Solitude, a new release by my guest today, Jasna Jovicevic, saxophonist, composer, multi-instrumentalist. Talk about multi-instrumentalist. We hear you on all kinds of instruments, yeah. saxophones to flute, and then you have to explain that percussion instrument also. And then in a very unusual setting of violin and cello and basses, how did you pick this instrumentation and how do you pick what you going to play me playing i just picked all my instruments i can't play that was easy you know as we said this was made during the pandemic so what we were doing we were sitting at home surrounded by our instruments i actually explored a lot tried out many things so i decided to just approach this whole album not as a typical jazz album approach instruments like a colors and then i was asking myself okay okay what colors do i need and that's how the instrumentation came to me not typically right so i play alto and soprano saxophone i play bass clarinet i play kalimba and xylophone i sing a little bit i play flute and i play space drum that's the kind of the same instrument as a hang drum so somewhere it's a hang drum and space drum I play all these instruments and then and then I needed colors for those ideas I had and I also wanted to include people I really love my friends and I wanted to include people that play different kind of music with a different musical background because I wanted to lose the idea of genre it's interesting but it's hard to sell after that right <laughs> but it was very interesting because these people came together they never played before together and it was such an, a great experience because We didn't play for like six, seven months at that point. Everybody was just sitting at home and then we came together. It was so interesting that everybody started to play music they never played the way they never played because I asked them to play differently than they would ever play. And people they played with, they had different ideas and different approach to music. So it was such a great experience. Cello and violin are harmonies, section and soloists. Everybody's soloist because it's much of these things are improvised. That one double bass is a very jazzy, super reliable bass player. And the other is more freely improvising musician. So they had their own roles and these roles changed. Sometimes they were basses, sometimes they were just cellos and percussions because we didn't have drums, as you can hear on the album. There is no drums, there is no harmony instrument. Yeah, I was just looking at, at my lineup because I remember there's one bass solo coming up on one of the tunes that's really impressive. Is this your 
your jazzy, reliable bassist. The reliable one who got crazy on this album. And we don't call him reliable anymore. See, that what came out from here. That's also, if, if you're going to play Antigen Pain, mm -hmm. that's kind of my jazz ballad on this album. And he plays a beautiful solo on it. Yeah, and then it has this tango flavor. It's very cool. And that tango flavor works with the strings, you know, having them grab your tango partner or whoever's close and be ready because this is really a beautiful song of well composition with melody and enjoy that that bass solo very very special so here is androgen pain from the album sounding solitude this is the newest release by my guest today jasna jovicevic who you will also hear what are you playing on this one i play bass clarinet and space drum enjoy <laughs>
That was Androgen Pain, track from Sounding Solitude, the new release by my guest today, Jasna Jovicevic, who you heard on the unusual bass clarinet and bass drum. It's a very intricate sound. You know, obviously, from what we heard so far, you approach music from a deeper spiritual background. It's not just a, let's entertain with some happy harmonies and melodies kind of thing. And I know that you're deeply into yoga and the yoga practice I, I watched you fascinate the kids at our workshop when we did our tour in May and you did a yoga session with them and I just saw them change when you had them look inside and feel their vibration tell us a little bit how you got into this and how it relates to the music when I first experienced yoga it was 20 years ago I just connected right away to my practicing saxophone it was very very similar to me and since then I hardly can actually see that they are different paths. Practicing saxophone for me is the way of meditation and doing yoga is a way of making music. As time passed I became a yoga instructor and I got specialized in Nada Yoga which is yoga of sound which means that when you meditate you use sound as a tool for meditation. So sometimes you know in the meditation somebody concentrates on a breath or visualization but in this way we concentrate on the sound we hear or produce so the different techniques for this album as we were talking that the whole album is about the inner interactions with our own being or our feelings or our own mental state instead of having interaction with the outside world i prepared the whole piece of four compositions that's called 10 steps to the state of laya it is kind of sonified nada yoga practice it's a very simple practice where you close your ears with your fingers you just close your you plug your ears you close your eyes and you actually listen to the inside sounds and as you develop this practice you can like do it for an hour two hours ahead you know just straight ahead so when you plug your ears you don't hear outside sounds only the inner and then you start to develop your inner hearing and this whole piece is about your inner hearing and the state you go through by listening the inside sounds and it's very interesting it's very rich and there are a lot of interactions there so one of the pieces four pieces these four pieces explains these 10 steps as you listen to these inner sounds you start to recognize oh i hear this now oh i hear something else so it's, i try to sonify the whole experience of this practice which actually i feel help people to calm down to accept and that that's related to that stage of the concept we were explaining earlier that this is the fifth step in a stage where you accept the new situation and you deal with yourself you deal you want to resolve you hope you want to find the resolution for the problems and to go on so this was my offer this practice was my offer that this could be one of the ways you can deal with and accept the situation we often don't realize or don't think about it how the vibrations we produce obviously have an effect on the body and that's why we react to music in the way we do you know monica i mean you're a player you know that only listening or playing music change your whole inner being and your emotions mental everything it may be conscious or unconscious but it's happening so vibration works its own way either we know about it or not it's happening so staying in solitude and actually starting to explore this inner sounds and vibrations and learning how to listen and after some time maybe manipulate it's a great tool for all the musicians i believe all right so our charge is sit for a minute and just plug your ears and be silent and listen to yourself yeah. do that after the show because we're going to play some music first we're gonna hear it's called second to six and it's yep. a free improv it's only soprano saxophone and the one of the bass players at the whole piece it's a duo starting our steps and we'll continue it later but let's start with step two to six in the 10 steps to the state of leia so this is from the album sounding solitude on the state 51 conspiracy label can be found on all in the streaming services look for Jasna Jovicevic J-O-V-I-C-E-V-I-C -E -E so here we go 10 steps to the state of Leia <laughs>
That was 10 steps to the state of Leavi. Listen to step two to six, and we heard an intimate duet of my guest today, Jasna Jovicevic, on the soprano saxophone with bass. And this is from the album Sounding Solitude that came out of solitude and sounding out how it feels like. And it's wonderful how we can progress to that stage of healing. The next step that we'll hear you on flute, you know, one thing 
to point out is that you don't just switch from like saxophone to flute and all these things. I mean, each one needs their own technique and their own practice, right? Do you have a way of keeping up on all your doubling instruments? I was a flute player when I was a kid. So, you know, I had all those practices when I was a kid. So that's the flute. I practice saxophones and I practice bass drum that I do practice, but not as much as I should. But yeah, I mean, for me, flute and saxophones and bass clarinets, they are like one group. And then the space drum is the other group. That's how I feel the instruments. The important thing to realize is that, you know, not playing an instrument doesn't mean you play several. People always ask me, you know, I play piano somewhere and they come up and say, oh, what other instruments do you play? And I'm going, isn't that enough? <laughs> I mean, think about why I play all these instruments. I easily get bored. And that's the truth. There is no big philosophy behind that. I just love changes and I love different sounds and you know this is not really a big player album it's not me crashing the house down with my solos this is not that kind of album at all it's more about finding the colors and the shades for all these colors that's what I was looking for and that's why flute because here it's needed to be heard flute not me being a great flute player but just these colors you know and I think that's something important to realize too because we often think about jazz about this competitive main music where you yeah. let it all out and, and play as hard as you can. One of the, I think, important things to have to change up the voices and that's something we're both advocating for that we it, it's a music that becomes more inclusive is actually to change its character. It's not about this competitiveness and who can play the loudest and fastest, about the depth of ex expression and, and having all the voices heard that should have a place at the table. Narrative of traditional jazz you were just mentioning I think it's still on it's always present it's always going to be present but luckily for the last 20 years there are many branches came out on the other side where we have so many different approaches to jazz as we were talking about and exploring jazz in different ways not just being a great soloist but also being a composer being a companion being an interactive pal and being an arranger so it's a different things you can get now from jazz which i i really enjoy let's get your healing power here <laughs> this is the seventh step in the 10 steps to the state of leia you're gonna hear my guest today jasna jovicevic and i'll spell that one more time j-o-v-i-c E V I C. And to find your more info, just look at jasnajovicevic.com and the music is on all streaming services. The album is called A Sounding Solitude. It's on the State 51 Conspiracy label. There's also a wonderful YouTube video that goes with it. Let's enjoy the seventh step.
that was 10 steps to the state of Leia. This is from my guest, uh, Jasna Jovicevic, composer, and you also heard her on flute on this one. And it's from her new album, Sounding Solitude, on the State 51 Conspiracy label. We talked a lot about being in solitude and being separated. And then we got very lucky. And in May, when most things were still locked down, we actually pushed through a tour in Germany and we finally we got to play together which was one of the fondest experiences ever because you know it was with you and Ray Regev, two really powerful expressive women and do something you know that I don't usually do that much and I want to do more of so we're gonna head for for one last one which is the joy of the unknown so meaning you know now we're getting out of this but we don't know yet how the future is gonna shape up and just as we were ready to dive into life as it was right we have to set back again so what's next for you where are you in the whole process and what are you planning besides finishing that doctorate and all that yeah. Good stuff? <laughs> yeah that's the big pain monica thanks for that for reminding me yeah i'm writing this dissertation which is very nice and it includes or you know also you and your help because it's about female jazz instrumentalists and it's about their identity and about the representation of female jazz players so I'm writing that and I'm doing a big research actually I'm doing now research I'm, which you don't know yet I didn't tell you I didn't have a chance to tell you that I am uh, traveling around Balkan countries like my region and online and in person and we are interviewing all the female players that are active now and all the female students from music high schools and the universities that have jazz departments. We have 25, 30 women interviewing about how they feel, how they feel their own role in on the whole scene, what are their expectations, what are their challenges, and actually the results of this research will be presented in the Graz when we will meet in November. So that's one thing I'm working on. I will play on Belgrade Jazz Festival in a few weeks with my free jazz trio. Finally, I'm looking for May, next May, when we will go on tour again and we meet in Germany again to do those great workshops for the girls, to do a Jazz Girls Day, right? Again, I hope I hope so. So mm -hmm. these are some plans. We can't really plan big stuff. It's just uncertain. Right. We are learning how not to plan, how to just go with it. So it's hard, but, you know, it becomes our new reality that we can plan. We will see. We can just hope and just work as, as it's happening. And then if it's not happening, we, we will find out something else, I guess. Uh, you know, I, I love that you said uh, we, we have to learn to, to not plan and, and to realize what we have, which is, you know, kind of that theme of that last one to ah. the way of the unknown you know and sometimes we're we're afraid of this risk if we don't know exactly what's going to happen tomorrow we can't plan it out but i think one thing we learn in this whole year is just to take the moment and and, and make the most out of it because that moment is what we can do something about <laughs> we can think about the future as much as we want and we can dwell on the past but what we really have is the moment to make something with it and if we go too far in both ends we missing it <laughs> yeah but monica what just you just said it's the wisest thing we can learn as humans you know to actually be in a present moment and to realize that's all we have and that really is not an easy thing to realize and it's very wise to live that way and here you go this is what we learned from this whole situation that we hate so much but still we got a great deal of this knowledge you know insights i think it's very important to have that and we should treasure that feeling although it's not easy but it's really great and i and i feel that if we do live this way that we only have this moment even greater music can come out of us not expecting and not planning and not you know wanting things to happen for us but to leave the things to happen to us and i think that's the that's the, that's the point of jazz as well right exactly it's the point of of going into the moment and making the most out of that moment so thanks for it 
taking us on that spiritual journey and everybody should check out so more info i'll, I'll spell it one more time <laughs> jasna jovicevic j-a-s-n-a j-o-v-i-c-e-v-i-c dot com or of course just looking on any streaming services for for the album sounding solitude the state 51 conspiracy label that last one is called joy of the unknown that's that's the closure and i think that's the biggest lesson we really 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 should take away from this to enjoy even if we don't know what's happening right now but there's something that's for us so thank you yasna for for taking us on that journey and uh, thank you monica for inviting me and indulging us with your beautiful music you're welcome so here it is joy of the unknown from sounding solitude on the State 55 conspiracy label by my guest today, who you also hear on vocals on this one. Beautiful vocals, actually. That's true. <laughs> Very well done. <laughs> Here we go. Joy of the Unknown. <laughs> Thank you. 
today with multi-instrumentalist, composer Jasna Jovicevic. Tune in for Talking Jazz every Thursday at 11 a.m. and every Monday at 7 p.m. right here on WETF 105.7 FM in South Bend, Indiana or online at wetfthejazzstation.org. Also find videos of previous shows on YouTube on the Monica Hersick channel. That's M-O-N-I-K-A-H-E-R-Z-I-G. Subscribe to get the newest updates. Thank you for listening.